In the Still Rising Beginner Guide, we are going to discuss the tips and tricks of the Souls-like action RPG to understand how the gameplay mechanics work and to thrive in combat. Steel Rising is developed by Spiders, the same creators of the story-rich RPG, Greedfall. It is set in an alternate and dystopian version of the French Revolution back in the 1700s when the automatons have taken control of Paris. If you're searching for ways to succeed in Steel Rising, then this guide is for you. In Steel Rising, you'll be exposed to aggressive encounters based on the types of automats you face. The rapid cooling and overheating systems related to stamina management and various status effects that can be effectively weaken your character aegis, as well as your enemies. In this guide, I will be focusing on the features you need to immediately grasp, combat tips, and farming advice to progress faster in the game. But first, let's begin with two of the best classes which make your playthrough much more manageable. During the first few minutes of the game, you have to decide Aegis's physical appearance and her class. There are multiple aspects to consider when creating the playstyle you wish to master, such as the stats or attributes to focus on and the weapons to wield. Unlike in Thymesia, Steel Rising features a total of four classes to choose from, such as Bodyguard, Soldier, Dancer, and Alchemist. Among these, the simplest to play are the Bodyguard and Soldier because of their core focus on dealing significant physical damage. The Bodyguard wields Body of Work, a massive hammer. Although the weapon limits your character's movement due to its heavy weight, it inherently has high impact and physical damage stats, letting you respectively knock down and butcher targets with ease. As such, you can focus on improving your primary attributes, namely durability and engineering to remain resilient in combat. What's also great about Body of Work is it can block incoming attacks since this weapon also functions as a shield. The Bodyguard class also carries several petrification grenades to disable enemies so you can deal critical damage effectively. The Soldier on the other hand wields the Gribble Hellbird, which is a ranged weapon. Its heavy attack is extremely useful in piercing targets from a safer distance. You also have the option to shoot them as long as you have enough bullets or alchemical capsules. The soldier has bonus attribute points for power to increase physical damage and impact as well as vigor to boost endurance. A high endurance lets you dodge more frequently since this action consumes more stamina than blocking. Still Rising features six attributes which are spread out evenly depending on the class you choose. Investing several points into power or agility will considerably improve physical damage together with impact and immobilization, respectively. The latter stats will let you knock back or knock down and briefly stun enemies effortlessly. Going on the offensive is an essential part of surviving in combat because you get to deal significant base damage allowing you to kill your enemies quickly. Additionally, it is important to remember to focus on investing in two primary and one secondary attribute at a time to prevent spreading yourself too thin. This becomes problematic if you have not saved up a lot of anima essence yet, since attribute upgrades become more expensive as Aegis's level goes higher. Your secondary stack can be durability for increased max HP, engineering for better armor, or elemental alchemy to enhance your resistances against status effects. Anima Essence is the only form of currency in the game. It allows you to invest points into attributes and to purchase materials to upgrade weapons, making this essential for character progression. Similar to other Souls-like games, you can lose all your Anima Essence when you die if you did not successfully retrieve them the first time. Luckily, there are several ways to farm for this resource to ensure that you continue to have a steady supply. To start with, be sure to buy the Grade 1 Avarice module from the standard Rest Point or Vestials Boutique. Equipping it will slightly increase the amount of anima essence you acquire by about plus 30 when defeating automats. The number may be small, but this accumulates over time, especially when you successfully slay more challenging enemies later on. Remember to sit on the Vestal a couple of times to repeatedly bring them back from the dead in order to harvest extra anima. It is also important to seek out unstable mini-bosses because they give a ton of this currency ranging from 850 to 4000 plus apiece. They are usually found in areas shrouded by blue mist. And finally, you should consider selling items you will no longer use, such as upgraded weapons or armor that do not align with your playstyle or class. Unlike anima essence that you acquire from fallen automats, you are able to acquire spirit essence with which you can safely store for special circumstances. Similar to Elden Ring's golden runes, these resources will not disappear when you die. You can pick them up from random locations like wooden boxes and barrels, tight spaces, and even the boutique for a price. They come in the form of lesser noble and valiant spirits, each with varying amounts of anima essence. Spirit essences should only be used in instances when you need a certain amount of currency to level up or upgrade weapons. Additionally, it is essential in cases when you have dropped anima after difficult fights, such as against colossal titans, and you have no way retrieving them yet, so you need to buy additional consumables. 
Stealth is an important aspect of Steel Rising, especially while you are learning the difficult mechanics of the game, as well as the movements of every automat. Sneaking up on your targets by cautiously walking toward them will give you a distinct advantage. Managing to kick them from behind when their diamond indicator turns red will allow you to deal great damage. Doing so will deplete the HP of weak to average enemies by more than 50% and knocks them down in the process. As such, these targets will need a few seconds to recover so you increase the chances of eliminating them on the spot. Stamina plays a key role in every action performed by Aegis. Whether she is jumping from one platform to the next, beating up mechanical armies, or even evading incoming attacks. To boost it, remember to invest a couple of points into the Vigor attribute or wear specific armor if your class specializes in other stats. Regardless of what you end up choosing, you will need to purchase the Endurance module to raise your max stamina. Should Aegis' stamina run out causing her to overheat, all actions will momentarily be limited, leaving her susceptible to enemy attacks. However, you do have the option to press a button, Y for the Xbox controller, to instantly replenish a certain percentage of it. But doing so repetitively will result in a full frost gauge, thereby freezing your character for several seconds. You also need to be careful of automats like the Musketeer and Frost Acolyte, since they inflict the frost status effect. This can combine with your rapid cooling mechanic easily freezing you in place. One module which will help you manage this is the efficient ventilation to reduce the percentage of frost damage dealt to you. Going against imposing unstable mini bosses and titans is nerve wracking, and so learning their patterns together with your class's strengths and weaknesses will help you understand how to fight them. Beyond blocking their attacks, it is important to develop fast reaction times by knowing the right moments to dodge while managing your stamina considering that these enemies are aggressive. Unstable mini bosses have red punctuation marks beside their health bars, notifying you to prepare for their combat of attacks. Titans, on the other hand, do not have such warnings, and since there is no animation cancelling in the game, you will need to anticipate their moves. Charge towards them and attack one to two times before dodging to the side in order to avoid getting hit hard. You can also goad these enemies into attacking you by running forward and quickly evading their attacks right after. A window of opportunity will then open for you to strike. Grenades are extremely powerful when still rising, so much so that it is possible to dominate most encounters even when you are facing challenging foes. The ones you will likely want to save are explosive and petrification grenades. Explosive grenades let you knock back enemies at the very least, with its improved version knocking down even titans themselves. Meanwhile, petrification grenades are extremely useful in immobilizing them, allowing you to deal critical damage. Not only can you easily attack while they are disabled, you are also able to kill them efficiently as a result, so remember to bring at least 5 of these together with alchemical grenades to prepare for difficult encounters. Alchemical afflictions such as frost flame and fulmination or electricity improve the damage dealt by Aegis. Frost disables the enemy effectively stopping them from moving. As such, you can deal charged heavy attacks safely without fear of retaliation. Flame deals massive permanent damage over time when you ignite targets, allowing you to quickly deplete their HP. And finally, Fulmination electrocutes and restricts their movements to amplify the damage you deal, so you can charge in for the kill. In Still Rising, wielding infused weapons while hacking hefty amounts of Frost Flame and Fulmination grenades are highly recommended to ensure that you successfully inflict the corresponding status effects. Combining infusion damage and physical damage makes encounters more manageable regardless of the type of automat you face. Additionally, you should consider applying the Lasting Affliction model to enhance the duration of these afflictions. The best weapons to upgrade are those that let you safely strike targets from afar since a lot of them become extremely hostile at close range. Suppose you are using armoured fans which require you to fight up close. You can pair this with the Charville 1789 Shield Musket, Fire Chain, or Hethestus Batons, which not only inflict status effects but also deal decent damage from the mid range distance. What works well when it comes to upgrading primary and secondary weapons is to follow the 2 to 1 ratio. Boost two levels of your main weapon first, then raise your secondary's level once. Prioritize reaching the max level of 5 to considerably amplify its respective damage. You can then use the rest of your anima essence to invest in attributes and purchase consumables to improve your build. If you've enjoyed this beginner guide, be sure to check out our Steel Rising review to know our thoughts on the Souls Like Action RPG.